I started researching on countering radicalization after interviewing groups of Muslim women who were really concerned about the effects of counterterrorism policy on them and their families and on their local communities. They wanted to know why it was that the state was reacting to them in a particular kind of way. But also they were telling me that actually I was interviewing the wrong women. The women I should have been interviewing were the women who didn't want to get involved in mainstream politics. And those women were women who were involved in prescribed or radical Islamic groups. For me, my area of interest is on why women in particular might choose to do this. And so it's been really interesting looking at the rise of Islamic State group or Daesh and how they've been so successful at recruiting young women. Daesh is really interesting in that actually its membership, around 18% are women. So it actually reflects more some of the leftist, socialist, anarchist type groups that we've seen in the past than perhaps those with a similar kind of ideology on say the far right. What is it that the young women who have joined Islamic State, what are they saying? What if we take their voices seriously in some of this and not just dismiss them as jihadi brides or naive young girls? If we were to take seriously the migration of young people to Iraq and Syria in order to join so-called Islamic State or Daesh, then we really do need to think about what images, what ideas, what realities are those young people experiencing here in the UK. What I'm asking for and what my research agenda is really about is about taking seriously the fact that men and women's journeys are different. They're both motivated by politics, by personal stories, by their circumstances. These things remain the same, but how that happens and the way that happens is through a gendered experience. What we need to do is really understand the way gender works in the ideologies of the group, in the experiences of the young women who are joining, and indeed in our own research questions. We're ignoring the opportunity for a holistic approach and gaining a better understanding of these processes. Instead, we should engage with the wide variety of debates and challenges and traditions and discourses and practices of what it means to be Muslim, the beauty of Islam. And in doing so, we can fundamentally change and challenge the narrow-minded understanding of Islam that these radical groups put forward.